Hello there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make your very own ombre ink pads, and it's super easy and it's pretty cheap too. So the thing we're going to use today, the product that you got to get, well you don't have to get, I'll show you an alternative, but um, cut and dry stamp pad foam. And you get an 8 by 10 or 8, yeah, 8 by 10 sheet for about $6, and that's enough to make about 10 to 12 ink pads um, if you're making the full size ones like I have here. Um, now they also make cut and dry felt. If you have a ton of reinkers that you want to use up, get the felt. If you have, I mean, dye base for inkers, get the felt. But otherwise, if you want to do what I'm doing here, which is super cheap, get the foam. If you can't find this, you could also use um, makeup sponges, get the round discs instead of the wedges so that you can kind of keep it like an ink pad. You won't be able to make it as big, but it will, it'll do the trick, you know? Now, the cut and dry foam, I'm going to show you here. I have an example of the foam and the felt. I've got about an inch and a half by four inch piece. Um, the foam, which we're going to use, has kind of like fun foam on the bottom, and then it's got this squishy foam, which is like just like the makeup wedges stuff on the top. Now the felt has like styrofoam, a layer of styrofoam, then a layer of cotton, then like a mesh of fine um, fabric on top. And the reason you don't want to use this today is because we're going to be using two watercolor paints, really cheap ones, and they won't go down through the mesh. I tried it um, and it didn't work, so we're going to use the foam today. So what you're also going to need is a a, like a Tupperware container or something to put your ink pads in when you're done. You're going to need a piece of plastic packaging, anything like, uh, you know, embossing folders come in those plastic packages. Cut those up. They work great. And we're going to glue this down to that using um, double-sided tape. Carpet tape will work really good. ATG will work good. Um, if you find that whatever you've used isn't holding up, then Gorilla Glue you can use after everything's all wet and, you know, you, you need to re-glue something, just use Gorilla Glue. It'll work fine. But um, that little, that foam backing does seem to respond well with the uh, ATG adhesive. Now we're going to use a little duct tape or whatever tape you have, washi tape, doesn't matter, to make some little handles because we want this ink pad to be able to be lifted up so you can use it to ink any size stamp. So actually if you want to make it smaller you totally could, but I think this would be really nice for background so you do kind of want a bigger stamp for that. So I tore off about a three inch piece and I'm folding some of it over so I have a little tab and I'm sticking that down on the back of my plastic packaging so I have a little tab to lift it out of my Tupperware with or whatever I decide to, you know, any any recycled clamshell packaging. Like I've got a CD box here, but that's not what I'm going to use um, permanently because I want to make sure I can seal it up to keep it, um, keep the ink wet. And these tabs will let us, so we can lift it up and put it down and, and we have a little edge space on the edge so we can handle it without getting our fingers all messy. So what we're going to use for the ink is watercolor paint and it works best if you do um, like a, a kind of a um, what do I want to say, like a, like a secondary color here. So I'm going to use orange and then I'm going to use red on one side and yellow on the other. So here where I did pink, what I had to do was I did like the rose watercolor and then I put white and I kind of worked them together. This I wanted green, so I did a green and I did some Prussian blue and then some lemon yellow and worked them together. You, you both work. I mean, both look great. You can see here, I got a good result with both of them. It's just, I think it might be a little easier. You first try to do like a secondary color rather than a primary color. And the watercolors I'm using are the Marie's and I'm going to show you here the price $4.99 for the set of 18 colors so um you know, a really good bargain works really good for this, and honestly, I think the ink's going to be better than anything you buy as far as a reinker. Um, but they're not exactly up to snuff as far as what I want to use to watercolor with, so works great for me to do this. It's just a basic student grade paint, so I'm going to go in with my orange um, in the middle, and you need quite a bit, so be generous with it. That's why we're using cheap paints. It's going to go through a lot. Um, try not to worry about that. And um, but once you have a nice inked up pad, it's going to last you a long time. Now you can do the same thing to rejuvenate an ink pad that you have that you don't have the inkers for too. I've done that with gouache, which is a more opaque um, watercolor. So you can use gouache. You can also use student grade watercolor, which tends to be more opaque because of the fillers that are used. So um, sorry, I'm talking a mile a minute here. I'm just excited. I'm excited to share this, and um, and I don't want the tutorial to take like an hour and a half. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just kind of go into that middle color and I'm trying to just kind of work it into the surface of the foam so I'm kind of smushing it and that foam is going to absorb it okay so we really want it to we want it to sink in we don't want to have globs of paint on the top we want it to sink in and we want our colors to kind of blend naturally where they meet and this um, will not travel too badly, so it'll work. It'll, it shouldn't uh, all turn one color. And that's something you have to also worry about with the dye ink is that the colors want to migrate a little easier. 
and so having a pigment paint watercolor paint it's not gonna you know if it does dry it out you can just give it a spritz of water and you're gonna be golden so you don't have to worry don't do this with acrylic paints because if it dries it's gonna harden in the pad and then you will have wasted that pad and it's not that expensive you know six dollars for a big sheet of it but um still I mean if you took the time to make a bunch of these you want to make sure they're gonna they're gonna last for you okay and I just kind of work it and try to get it to blend and I may add a little bit more in there if I feel like I don't have enough on there. You could do you could use this to rejuvenate any of the ink pads you have that have a spongy surface like this. Um, now if you can get a reinker form that might be a better idea but if you can't or you don't want to or you just want to kind of wing it then this totally will work. All right, so now I'm going to do a test stamp because um, I want to know if, I, if it's um, if I have it wet enough. I might need more pigment ink. I might need more. Um, I might need more water. It looks like it's pretty good. I actually probably over inked that a little bit, but let's see. Oh, perfect! It's perfect on the first try. Now I want to tell you what to do if it's not perfect because you might have that and you're stamping and it's like boy I'm not getting anything there Lindsay what am I going to do? Um, so if it's not perfect what you can do is you can spray some fresh water on it make sure it's clean water or um, water with a little bit of rubbing alcohol in it just so that you know you don't have any bacteria or anything that's going to mold on your paint. Um, give it a spritz try it if it still seems too dry put more paint on there you probably just don't have enough paint but you can see some um, some different examples I did with the pinks and with this uh, oh I want to try that stamp with this ink because um, that one was that was the first one I did so I think I have to let that pad dry out a little bit it's pretty good but I definitely um, was doing a lot of experimenting with different stuff on that one so let me just try this one this is solid image it's a uh, technique junkies stamp it's a gorgeous stamp but you know it is a little more challenging to stamp with because you have so much solid area and it is new and I haven't washed it usually you should wash your stamps when you first get them just to make sure there's no residue on them so we're gonna we're gonna try that and see if that's juicy enough I'm on a I'm on a curved block too so I have to make sure I ink up the bottom of that well so let's see how that works here oops don't have enough space on here and Rocking it away from myself. Hey, that's pretty cool. I like that. You get a really nice um, grunge effect there. Maybe I'll do a little more yellow in there so I have a little more contrast there on the bottom. But that's how you do it. Make your own DIY ombre ink pads. And for, so for storage, what I would do here is, um, well, I would think I would take a Tupperware container because I want a little deeper of a container. But um, I just put it in here like I could put a couple in here and then I would just use my tabs to lift it up out of there so I didn't get my fingers all inky every time I want to use it and um, like I just have these setting in here for now but they'll probably all go in together in a big like you know when you go to the Chinese restaurant and you get sometimes they give you like plastic rectangle containers those will be perfect for storing these that's probably what I'll use but I uh, hope you give it a try if you have any questions let me know in the comments below please give me a thumbs up and share this with all your friends and of course watch more videos learn more cool stuff and more ways to save your money thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy crafting.